It'll be spectacular, this. <laughs> the wood pigeon has evolved to be the perfect prey animal. They fly fast, see well, and can perform aerial maneuvers Top Gun would be proud of. Because I was inverted. Unfortunately, they do breed all year round. And when there is food about, they can eat for England, making them a big problem for farmers. Today, we had planned to meet Paul Payne, a dedicated pigeon shooter, to get amongst a big gathering of pigeons. However, a big storm that arrived a day earlier than expected meant that the plan had to change. So we're here in Essex. Good morning. What's the plan, Mr. Payne? What are we doing today? Well, what we're doing is crop protection today. This was spring wheat. It had to be uh, uh, swath laid in rows to ripen because they, with the drought that we've had, had to get it cut to under sow with uh, winter oilseed rape, which you can see in the ground. But what the pigeons are feeding on is not the, uh, is not the rape at all. It's this, it's the, uh, uh, the heads that have been left on the ground, so we've got to keep them off of this. Wheat rots out quicker than uh, barley heads, uh, so this won't last very long, but you just don't want the pigeons uh, attacking the farmer's rope, which will happen. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll just sit up and watch, just confirm the flight line. That's what you always want to be doing. It's not just rushing out, you know, I've done my reconnaissance here. So we will be uh, just sitting up, just confirming that, and then we'll uh, set up. As the reconnaissance started, uh, the, the field uh, next door was borage. Um, when that was uh, just uh, laid in rows, uh, swath, uh, they just started to play around with that and cause a little bit of a problem, but then it was harvested. Uh, and then, you know, there was no birds for a little while, then they've started to come back. So we're going to go here? Yep, we're going to go here. Main flight of the birds is going to come down the hedge here, head into wind. This is a borage stubble, right being over there. So uh, the best line of flight is here. So we're going to pop a hide there right on this corner. As the birds come up, head into wind, we'll have a right to left crossing shot. Perfect. We've got to be heading to wind? Want them, you, want, you really want them, they'll keep coming up the wind, head into wind, uh, like this bird is just coming up here now. Right over the back there, yep. see. They prefer to fly head into wind or cross in the wind rather than it being up their backside, fluffing up their feathers. So that's what we'll have today. Perfect. So just set up a hide, put some decoys out. Yeah. Job done. Yeah, we've we'll put some machines out here. Uh, because it, it, the colour of this crop, decoys don't show up that well on it. So what we're going to do is going to put we're going to put a machine, uh, a, a magnet, right up on the left here. I don't like the birds to cross the magnet, so they're going to cross the decoys first on their way to the magnet, and we'll kill them before they get there. Try. Try and kill them before they get there. I'll kill them. Thank you. You go on the left. <laughs> I'll go on the right. <laughs> We've got this down. <laughs> All right, let's get going. Uh, Johnny, that ain't a good there, mate. You've got to put that. Bring your motor back. <laughs> uh, for a six foot seven guy. <laughs> mm. He's going to be entertaining. <laughs> now that is a sight. <laughs> that didn't go to plan. <laughs> we need to be more like professional. This is, this is a serious level. That's seasoned expert. And <laughs> this is um, part time Jimmy. I've got to say, Johnny, that, that is terrible. I even thought I'd bring in my old desk thing out the office, you know, the one, the broken one. Yeah. And I thought, no, Sash will get angry because he won't have one. So I thought, we're going to be miserable together. <laughs> Thanks, mate, that's actually quite nice. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. This is a 360 degree hide. The only reason is we've got no tall tree here. And we might be shooting out we've the got back. No background, so, and also we've got the 
cameraman. You know, so any bird can look straight in. So we have quite a tall hide here. And we're allowed to shoot backwards? You are, yeah. Perfect. So your heights are similar every time, height-wise, size-wise? No, not at all. When I'm on my own, I'll have a very small hide. I'll have the sides really high, but the front really low. Yeah, so what we've got here is light net. We're right out in the open, no branches, doesn't need it. Light nets are always better than uh, dark any time of the year and just break it up a little bit at the front. Big gaps, see right through rather than looking over. And that is our hide. How do we get in and out? Through the side here. It's gonna be a lot of wriggling. No. I thought we'd have, like, at this point in your career, a hinged door. <laughs> no. There you go. Even for you, you can get through there fine. I'll step over it, mate. Same I've, as you. I've left, this, I've left this quite low so you can see right through. See my nets here, huge holes in them. So you don't have to keep looking over the top. You just sit still, look through, and you'll see anything that comes to the decoys. Nice movement, bang. Miss. Miss, <laughs> in your case. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed we brought some dead birds. Yeah, and that's that's just so if we don't shoot any, we can pretend we did. No, they, these are for the machines. Um, they've come out the freezer. Uh, these are what I use all the time. Uh, made by Decathlon. Uh, they're French. Pretty simple. This is a little thing that I I use if you're if you're decoying on a, a standing crop, you can hook these right up and put them on the top of the crop. So whatever crop you're you're shooting on. The, the bottom of the, the, the decoy wants to be on the top of the crop. Mm -hmm. They cannot decoy it or what they cannot see. You see so many people just putting them in a, <laughs> like that. Well, that's not gonna be seen. So you can put them a bit prouder than you might usually? Always. Okay. So our decoys- How, are, how tall is two two? How high is too high above a crop? Well, you've got two, two and a half foot for uh, uh, okay. wheat. And I can get these up that height with these, no problem at all. I've got these, uh, little things which I'll show you. So if we're at the, the top of the crop, pigeon just sits in there whichever way you want it and that won't blow out. And either. the birds are very happy just to come into that. It makes no difference at all what height that is. So you could stick that, that bird up here or you could have it down there. But my uh, rule of thumb is to have the bottom of the decoy, top of the crop, no matter what the height of the crop. Yep. They won't be able to decoy to what they can't see. You did that in a yeah, real dark green camo net. That was standing out like a sore thumb. No branches at all. It's movement. If we keep still in the hide, they won't see you. I think branches, camo, it's a nice placebo. I, I, I don't begrudge it. It's a nice thing yeah, to wear. It makes well, you feel better. Look at me, light shirt, no camo. You just don't need it. You just wear whatever you feel comfortable. If you're one of these guys that's going to jump up and down all the time, then yeah, camo hat, camo top, camo gun, camo everything. But you just don't need it. If you sit still, movement all the time. Okay. If you sit still, birds won't see you. Where are we going to put them? What pattern are we going to use? Anything traditional? What's your right. general thinking? Right, as opposed to pat decoy patterns, uh, pigeons have never fed in a pattern. Never have, never will. Um, so all you're trying to create is uh, a, a class of a shot that's easier to shoot. Uh, so what we're going to do today, the birds are coming from the right. So we're just going to put a line out for the birds to follow. Put the machines right up the wind so the birds cross the decoys. We'll kill them before they get to the machines because they'll start jinking around on that. Big mistake a lot of people make. They just put the machine right in front of them and then the birds are jinking around all the time. So always put the machines upwind entice them in slow them down yeah unless you're using a flapper uh, the flappers i use which you'll see uh, is the uh, flight line decoys ff6 uh, nick tape they've revolutionized it really um, they're the best thing to come out since the magnets uh, windscreen wiper motors powered by um, and I, I, I can't say I, I don't know the guy, I'm not sponsored by the guy, but he makes hide poles and he's uh, FF5, FF6, and uh, the birds will come straight at that. Uh, it's the movement of the wings, he's got it to such a, a fine degree that the speed of the wings, as opposed to a lot of other flappers, 
uh, are really slow. He's got it really fast and uh, a lot of the time I don't even use a, uh, a, a magnet. I just purely use one or two of those. That's so all we're doing just, just with these is just making a bit of a line really. And you'll go and take them out of these bags? Yeah, and yeah. then, then, then we'll, we'll prop them up. Um, with cradles, without cradles? So we get them as high as we can. And this is just, a, this sort of pattern randomness is just making you feel all... Yeah, no, this is there's no pattern. It's just getting the birds to fly up the wind. That's all it's getting them to do. And how many we got out today? All I ever use, all I ever use is 16. You really don't need no more than that. A lot of people, you know, use 20s, 30s. I've even done trials of 100 decoys out. No difference. Less is more. <laughs> less, if you're in the right place, right time of day, less is more. We've got a 12 mile an hour south southwest wind. So that, that isn't strong enough to dictate that every single bird has its head into the wind. If you've got a 30, 40 mile an hour wind, every bird head into the wind. But people get a bit mixed up with putting every, every bird head into wind. You just don't need to do that. It's just a standard machine magnet. The best ones for lasting really are the windscreen wiper motors. So all we're doing is getting that in the ground fairly upright. I have got a thing that I made here. This is a good idea, so if you've got any crop that's up in there, you can raise the machine, but you can raise these arms with these thumb screws. On drillings, I don't use that at all. I've made my own little thing here, which slides up and down. So you can keep it as close to the yeah. ground as possible. You so you find it. that having the machinery not sticking prominent makes a difference, whereas the decoys you yes, want prominent. Yes, if there are birds that are a little bit juttery, then a big machine sticking out the ground is not the best. So on, it's only on drillings where the field is dead flat that I'll uh, put that right flat like that today. It won't make any difference at all. I'll just show you these. These are just a standard arm. For a magnet. I cover mine in tape so they don't shine when they turn around in the sun. Um, I've also got these so in the in the summer months when there's no wind I extend them right the way out. The only thing is if there is a wind they just drain your batteries. Uh, so like today we've got a reasonable wind we just don't need them. Is this a variable setting on this motor? No that's just one speed. Just one right. speed. What I like to do with my pigeons instead of having them dead flat if you go out in the field, you can't see the back of the bird. I tilt them inwards. Um, if you go back out in the field, you will see the back of this pigeon. Um, if you turn them the other way, they don't like that. They won't come nowhere near you. It's a bird turning into the wind. So that's what we will have today. Not silly. Just it's, Isn't it crazy that they don't think that two pigeons going around in circles when is I, suspect? When I first, the first one I ever brought out, was from a guy from Wales, and uh, I've actually still got the machine. It's called the Whirly. A uh, huge thing stood up here, uh, massive, great, rusty old arms on it, and I couldn't believe it. I set it up, and the pigeons were just coming straight to it and hitting the arms. Never seen nothing like it, but now every, everybody's got a magnet. They're shot over every day of their, <laughs> their working yeah. week, and uh, they're they're uh, lost a bit of its magnetic quite a bit value. Used to these, yeah, especially if they're overused. Uh, so it's up through its back side, into its head, stretch the wings up, clip them on these little spikes, quite tight, and they won't come off. And just turn it in a little bit. That's all you need to do. Right, this is the FF6 flight line decoys. Uh, this is a stand. Put it to the top of a crop if you need to. Uh, we don't need to do that today because. Uh, What's left of the crop is quite short. Um, you do want to, you do want to put these machines head into wind. It's to imitate a pigeon coming into land or it moving is, about yeah. in the crop. It's just making a, a picture that a pigeon would expect to see. So when you set these up, open the arms right up, and then you must always break the wings on these. So I just use a little pair of pliers, quite tight to the body, just a quick snap, head on the spike. And all you've got to do is just stretch it out onto this hook and push the hook through. I just use these little bits of cable. It's quite windy today, just to hold the wing in place. Save Saves you running side. out, having to fix it. Same again, just that little bit of wire. That's all you need. It's got a tail spreader at the back, 
which is really good. The pigeon will always spread its tail when it's coming into land. This works on a remote control, so you can have it various different speeds. Um, and you can turn it off more importantly if... Yeah, so basically, I just have it one press. So that will go off on its own now, so it's on a timer. If I want it to go fast, continuous if I see a pigeon, I just keep my finger on button A and that will just keep flapping. So that is it. Make sure it's unloaded before you fit one of these bad boys, for obvious reasons. <coughs> that was a success, I'd say. Seeing as you said we might not shoot any, I'd say that was a, a good success. We shot one, let's go on. <laughs> I mean, that bird properly committed. The young one. And the young ones are a bit more yeah, dibby. A little bit more silly, the young ones, this time of the year. When they've been chased about a bit in the winter, they won't be. They'll be a little bit more wise. And you're looking for the easiest shot possible. You're not looking to test your skill as a shooter here. Yeah, you're, you're, not, you're not trying to make it hard. You're there really to, uh, to do a job to protect the crop. I don't see no point at all, you know, shooting at birds further than fo uh, 50 yards. You know, these people that claim they can shoot at 85 and 100 yards, I think their, their ego has got a bit too, too much for them. My view is why shoot at them? You know, if you're putting it out there that you can kill pigeons or anything for that matter a hundred yards what is that telling the youngsters that we're bringing into the sport yeah it's telling them that they can do that that and they'll, they'll try to be like their their hero and uh and all they do is yeah they might shoot one in 20 but yeah how many are they going to maim and that's not what this is about it's about killing them cleanly and picking them up but it's the same with your, your decoy layout you know it's just to, so the bird presents the shot that you want there is no feeding pattern. Uh, so I said earlier on, there is no feeding pattern. There never was. Uh, so basically how I decide to set up uh, the decoys is, is what you see on your reconnaissance. So I'll give you two examples. If it's drillings, uh, autumn or, or uh, spring drillings, uh, the, the seed that's dropped, it's very few and far between. So the birds will be really spread out, you know, 10, 15 yards between each bird as opposed to on winter rape. Uh, they're all tightly packed together. The food is all around them wherever they land. Will you ever go out and change your pattern if something's not going right? Yeah, I know a lot of people do really fiddle a lot with their patterns. Uh, what I tend to do, uh, I'll get their first 10, 15 down. I'll set them up on dead bird cradles. I adjust all my cradles because the ones you buy commercially have all got their heads stretched and their neck sticking right out like a bird's going to take flight. So I bend them down and uh, so they look more natural like a feeding bird. They don't all sit in the decoys with their heads stretched right up. I'll, so I'll set the, I mean, I'll show you a picture shot 275 last week. I got out of my hide once uh, and all that was really was to set a few dead birds up in amongst my plastics. Uh, I didn't have to take my plastics in, I rarely ever do. Uh, even if they're shining in the sun, makes no difference at all. The birds on any day well, kind of like, it sounds crazy, but let them talk to you. If they're veering off when they're coming to your decoys, they don't like something, a bird upside down. Uh, but if they keep coming, don't get out your hide. You know, if, if they keep coming, just, just keep shooting. Don't keep in and out, in and out. I mean, when I shot that, you know, 275 last week, um, I reckon there was 30, 40 birds upside down didn't make a scrap of difference at all. Lovely shot. That was pretty good for you. For a beginner. <laughs> <laughs> it's just purely on the day. I'm gonna quit now. <laughs> yeah, I'll stop 100%. <laughs> Glad you're pointing that out, it's a little. There come another one in front. Oh, you. Yeah, it's, it, it is just reconnaissance. Um, you know, being in the, it, you, you cannot do too much of that. Uh, I mean, I'm lucky, I'm retired now. Uh, you know, I, I've always owned my own business, so I've, I've, I suppose in a way, lived in an ideal world where I can nip off for half an hour, Other watch a film. Other than all of the stress, anxiety. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shotguns and ammunition, I know people obsess about it, and it's a subject of much conversation. I mean, I keep things simple. This is a Miracu MK60 Grade 5. Uh, I have all my guns T-choked uh, and 
I shoot three quarter and three quarter in both barrels. Um, the uh, hull the cartridges are superb. 29 gram six. Fourteen hundred twenty-five feet so per second. That is <laughs> <laughs> a nice thing. They are. They're low on recoil, and they really have got. You know, I'm not a fan of big loads. Uh, and they're unnecessary for this kind of pigeon shooting. As yeah, well. up to fifty yards. Up to fifty yards. These will kill a pigeon with a three-quarter choke cleanly. Um, big fan of uh, whole cartridges. Uh, a lot of cartridges for me because my shoulder is not too good these days. So I've got a bit too much recoil. Uh, and they haven't, so uh, yeah, they do the job nicely. They do, um, but I have have I have got other guns uh, that, I, that I use. Uh, yes, yeah, so I shoot on the edge of a nature reserve, which noise is an issue. So I use a 410 uh, a fair lot of the time. Yeah, I've got it. I use a 28 uh, bore little uh, Browning as well. Uh, do a lot of my game shooting with a, a 28 bore Browning. Yeah, that, and that's about it. That's that's about all I know. I have to put an ISIS pad on mine, uh, which is kind of on springs. Um, I have these on uh, uh, all my 12 balls. Uh, they're a brilliant invention. Um, and, and don't go wrong. Uh, I'll say this is at 150, 200,000 cartridges for it. But around the culture area, there is an awful lot of stock doves. Uh, and it's illegal to shoot stock doves, correct? Sorry? It's not legal to shoot stock doves. No, no, you uh, you can't shoot a stock dove or the, uh, I mean, the, the, the blue rock dove you won't get around here. Uh, but a lot of people do make the mistake and say that they're, uh, that, that they're uh, rock doves when they're not. Nicely done. The grace with which you do that is magnificent. Hey? Smooth, easy. Cool, the way calm. to shoot pigeons is, is to, when you think that's, you know, just before it gets to where you want to take him, it's just to get up nice and smooth, and so the bird's not jinking around. But I think I'll uh, smooth that spinner out a little bit in a minute. It won't be cold for long. Yeah, Two. On it. Which one? Front Let's keep nice and still. Now, there you go. Um, got the pack. Do I shoot a pack? No. Uh, start of the day, most definitely not. Um, if they come in in bunches more than 20, I'll just tip my hat, let them go. You'll only kill one or two. And what you're going to do is scare the other 19 or 20. Uh, and they'll be decoy shy for another day. So uh, I generally let them go. But later on in the afternoon, then I'll shoot at the packs. But, uh, you know, uh, definitely not first thing in the, in the day. I know a lot of people that do from, from day one, but all you're doing is educating the bird. You're not gonna, you're not gonna do any good like that. It's, I mean, a pigeon, I believe a pigeon has got a, a, a memory of 10 to 14 days. So for That's just say, through your experience, you yeah. figured out that if you go back within that time period, they will not. Yeah, if you've got a repetitive crop, uh, I mean, uh, a few years ago, I shot 1,880 pigeons off of one field apiece, uh, and I shot that every 10 to every 10 to 14 days, um, and on a different part of the field each time. So, you know, you'd go there, shoot 100, 200, uh, there'd be nothing on the fields the next day, uh, and then gradually a few would turn up, you know, 50, 100, let them settle until there's a nice flight line coming in, nice and settled. You cannot shoot jumpy pigeons that are continuously harassed. They've got to be settled. They will decoy. If you leave them 10 to 14 days, they will decoy like they've never been shot at. It's funny, they say that the slower the tempo of getting up, the slower you get on the bird, the more guaranteed that shot is. As yeah. soon as they're, that's a gimme bird, but you stand up, you rush, you mismount, and you shoot nowhere near it. Yeah. You really do favour pulling just behind that tree, Here don't you? Here we go. No, he lives to live another day. Oh, that was a poor workout. The problem is sometimes in a, in a hide like that, you know, your, your feet are everything. And <laughs> sometimes like a shot like that, you can't move your feet, can you? Not without kicking Sasha in the face, and that would be a shame after I've ripped his shirt. 
the thing is with the net being uh, the net being light, when your head comes above that, it's roughly the same colour as it. It doesn't stand it's perfect, out. Perfect, yeah. As opposed to if you have these, yeah, you know, a lot of people use real dark green nets, and you shove your pink face above it, it stands out. But you can just, yeah. So you look right through this. You haven't got to move till the bird's in range. Have you ever in your life put camo face paint on? No. Why not? <laughs> Spray tan. Really no. aren't we? <laughs> yeah, I just can't emphasise it enough. Really, movement, movement, every time. I mean, I, I, I'm on the road an awful lot. <clears throat> so shooting 20,000 plus acres, I see some people shooting, and you can see how the birds react to them. Yeah, when they're up and down, they put a. a I really just put one off then, that was pretty stupid of me, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they put a net hide up so thick they can't see through it. They build these beautiful palaces, you just don't need to do that. My favourite bit of shooting is uh, one of which me and my shooting partner, Peter Theobald, love is two hides out in the middle of a field. All right, and work together. Y yeah, and uh, we'll. Well, uh, it's, it's quite easy around the area that Peter lives. They're huge, some of these fields. Uh, and in the summertime, you know, massive volume of birds. And um, we we'll put two hides out. If the flight's through the middle of a field, we we'll put two hides out, 50, 60 yards apart, put a couple of spinners behind us, and then the decoy's in front, so they kind of want to go through that gap. So we've got 150 yards arc of fire. And if they come in that hole, I mean, Peter Theobald is one of the best country shots. He's definitely one of the best vision shots I've ever seen. Uh, and they don't go out. <laughs> We've had some huge days like that. But it's really enjoyable, you know, just watching the birds decoy like that. But you don't see people really doing that, you know, putting two hides out. I'd certainly never done it before I met Peter, and he'd never done it. And we just said one day, let's try it. You have to trust your partner in that situation though, right? Well, I, I've shot with Peter the last 12 years and I can honestly say he's never once done an unsafe shot over the top of my head, put a shot my way and I haven't him, you know. It, it's a pity we didn't meet each other 30 years ago. But we, we, we get along extremely well. We, we don't disagree on any situation where it's set up and what time to start and uh, who gets the most. There's no competition between us at all. You know, and we really do enjoy our sport together. So it's, it's 12 odd years now, uh, maybe a bit longer than that. What are you looking for with a pigeon cartridge? Just a clean kill, soft recoil? Uh, nothing, <coughs> nothing special? Yeah, for me, firstly, I want something that kills cleanly. I want a smooth cartridge. I don't want loads of mess up my barrel. Uh, something that patterns, I don't use pattern plates. If I change my gun, I'll have it immediately too choked. Uh, and I will know how that's shooting on how I'm killing the birds. Um, but uh, you're not, you don't change choke, don't change too much. No, no. You see these people go, oh, the birds are, you know, too close today. Well, put your decoys out a bit further then. <laughs> don't miss. Like this, with these spectacular miss. Lovely. started now and then it took a dip and now we're back up. It's about calming down and doing things with deliberate moves. I had an eye test yesterday with the amazing headlines. That video will be out probably before this one, you might have seen it. In which he told me my eyes were suboptimal. So I've got that playing in the back of my head. And then we had an interesting conversation about eye movement and the deliberateness about how when you see a professional play shooter they get in a stand, they look at the kill point, one bat, pull, bang. It's a real economy of movement and motion. Very cool, right? And how when you see someone early, they use their eyes a lot. Like there's a lot of processing back and forth. And this was because I sucked up one of the, the tests that we did, one of the sort of the measurement tests for eye to brain, hand coordination -y stuff. And so it's interesting here now understanding that actually to calm down, use your eyes and your brain less, use economy, calm, move, bang, and actually just switch off that amateurness. Yeah, one of the other things I always do, when, I, when I've got my plastics out and I've shot a few dead birds, um, so I get the first few put out, I'll always put them on the approach of the decoys. So they're, they're crossing dead birds before they're crossing plastics. 
you spoke about monocular and binocular vision before. Yeah. Can you just explain that to me like I'm an idiot, which well, I could be? When a, when a pigeon is committed to the decoys, that, that will have binocular vision. That will be looking exactly where that's going. So if you jump up in a hurry, that will see you <coughs> uh, a lot more easier than, than, it, than it would do. So if you get up nice and smooth, that's got its binocular vision exactly where that's heading to land, as opposed to monocular vision, when that's just flighting, that can see everywhere. So you jump up, that sees you move in the slightest way, that will jink off. Once they get up the wind, Rarely will they ever turn around and come back. As soon as they you know, head up to wind, as soon as they've gone past your decoy pad, sometimes the young ones do, but they will rarely do that. They will just keep going up the wind. And how are we <laughs> telling young, old, male, female? Uh, you can't tell male or female. Uh, the, the, um, the young haven't got the uh, bar around their neck until they're pushing a year old. I want to sit up on a branch over there. The cheek of it. Oh, yeah. And that's when they get like sexual maturity as well, when they've got the white bar around their neck. All the young ones won't have that. You're a very mature shooter, it's kind of nice to see. That first shot and then, no, I won't take a second. It was a very deliberate, nice movement. Well, as those birds were coming in, there was only one that was going to decoy. But if you see the way I get up, that bird never even knew I was there. So the others just, didn't even care too much. They just no, slightly just started to bank off. But I can assure you, if you jump up quick, <laughs> they will. They'll be twisting and turning. And the shot is so difficult when they're like that. You know, they, they, they do so much damage to pigeons. It is a pity to shoot them, but, you know, they really do destroy the crops. Um, so at the end of the day, they've got to be controlled. I'd never want to see the last pigeon shot. Uh, and it definitely wouldn't be me shooting it, uh, but yeah, they, the numbers are increasing year on year. Um, I mean, I don't know how many there is. Some people say there's 10 million, some people say there's 20 million, but you know, I don't know how they prove that either way. Uh, there's not enough research gone into that. Uh, but all I know is years ago, there's no way that, <coughs> there's no way that, yeah, you consistently kill 100 bird days, you just wouldn't. Uh, you might get one or two a year, three a year. See? Never even knew you was there. Absolute perfection. And that, that shot you just took there was absolutely textbook. You know, bird was coming in, stood up slowly, mounted the gun, bird dead before it knew it what didn't was even know it was there. No. Yeah. Didn't and veer, that just didn't proves know. the point. It can see you <coughs> really easily. You've got a, you've got Bright a red shirt. On. I've got a white shirt on. Oh, it's fresh out the wash with high UV yeah, stuff on it. You just don't need to dress head to foot in camo, and you just proved that. Yeah, but it's an identity thing, isn't it? You don't need to dress in full tweed to shoot with pheasants. But it's what I do <coughs> using the FF6. Comes with a stand of remote control. Uh, I don't use that. Uh, it doesn't seem to need it. But when I see a pigeon uh, coming that's not fully committed, I just keep my finger on button A and that will continuously flap. And uh, they will come straight at it. They're absolutely deadly. Um, I had some cracking days on standing green wheat this year with them right on the top of the crop, just them, no decoys. And they were just lethal, they were. Mr Payne, that was a honour. It was a pleasure to watch you shoot, to learn stuff and for you to snug up legs to me, that was quite nice too. No, it's been, been a pleasure having you down. Hopefully we can do it again one day. It's, um, yeah, it's an uh, interesting sport, isn't it? And everybody can learn something from it. I hope somebody has picked up a little saying of what we've shown today and, and uh, put it into practice. Yeah, I mean, I, I learned a lot. Just, it's, it's interesting, and you can see a lot on YouTube, and hopefully we've shown a bit of it, but actually just to sit and watch some of the actual technique as opposed to just kill shot kill shot kill yeah. shot that smoothness with which you get up connect let the bird establish a line to kill was just it makes it a lot easier yeah well that's what it's all about why make it hard for yourself at the end of the day you know it, it, it is if you haven't got your your high discipline right you're you know you're going to make it an awful lot harder for yourself find the line of the bird you know, obviously you've got to find the birds where they're feeding and their flight. You know, their flight is most important, obviously. You can't just go and sit yourself anywhere. But uh, right time of day. Um, and, uh, yeah, 
they've, uh, we've shot some good birds today. Uh, no silly ranges, all killable birds, and hopefully you'll see from the shot cam footage that uh, that's what we've achieved. I mean, whole cartridges have achieved that quite comfortably. Yeah, I mean, there, there was nothing outside of their capabilities. There were no. some good clean kills and there were some good clean misses. Yeah. Apart from, from Sasha, who yeah. put his camera down and picked up a gun and made us look... He picked up my gun on his birthday and uh, well done, Sasha. Slade. That was, that, <laughs> Thanks, gents. You shot really well. <laughs> uh, it's been a pleasure to share both your company in this tiny hide. And Lovely. until next time, mate. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Sasha. Mm -hmm.